श्रीमते रामानुजाई नम नमस्कार टू आस्ति का द लास्ट वीक वॉज हेक्टिक वित् वैकुंठ एकादशी कैंकर्यम्स एंड अदर थिंग्स एंड ऐ वॉज इन एबल टू अपलोड दि ऑडियो फैल्स ऐ डिट मई तमिल वर्सन एट कपल आफ डेज बैक बट दिस वन टुक टाइम सारी अबउट दैट एंड हिव यू गो अगेन हॉप ऐ कैन कीप अप द पेज फ्रम नव ऑन वी नो दट दि कमीशनर हेच आर एन सी गेव एन अनकंडीशनल अपॉलजी इन द हॉनरबल मेड्रा हाईकोर्ट ऑन ट्वेंटी सेकेंड डिसेबर ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन we are also trying to understand why he did so and the details about the case uh, in the previous audio post we understood that the honorable madras high court had decided that hrnc has absolutely zero knowledge and capability to protect heritage temples following this the hrnc admitted that they had made mistakes and blamed it on non availability of a conservation manual the honorable courts also thought that having a manual will help protect and direct directed the hrnc to work with an international organizations like unesco as well as agama pandits to understand how they can come up with a manual which will serve the purpose that is to protect the temples fearing that if unesco comes hrnc may be exposed of their inefficiency corruption mismanagement and misappropriation the department lied on oath stating that unesco has no office in india with the documents presented by the departments themselves the petitioner exposed this lie right in the court i have said that in this post i will explain that in what unesco is and i know you all you all are waiting the same eagerly so let's go on to understand about unesco many of you might have known that unesco is part of united nations United Nation is an organization which has almost all countries in this world as its members. This organization was started in 1945. The peace loving nations believe that the United Nations can achieve the objectives stated in its mandate. After the Second World War, fearing that the world may not be able to bear a third one, it was felt by and large that a strong organization is required to prevent a third world war. The result of this thought is the formation of United Nations. The objectives of United Nations are peacekeeping and security, human rights, economic development and humanitarian assistance among others. UN has six principal organs. They are UN General Assembly, UN Security Council, UN Economic and Social Council, UN Trusteeship Council, UN Secretariat and International Court of Justice. Let's see what UNESCO is then. United Nations has five major agencies: World Bank, World Health Organization or WHO, World Food Program, UNESCO and UNICEF. Of this, UNESCO is United Nations Educational, Science and Cultural Organization. This was created in 1945. Its declared purpose is to contribute to peace and security. by promoting international collaboration through educational scientific and cultural reforms in order to increase universal respect the object of objectives of unesco is peace reduce reduction of poverty enhancing growth to improve the relationship between countries through educational scientific cultural means so unesco is an international agency this does not belong to any single country In India they are here since 1948 of the many important aspects of UNESCO include identification of heritage symbols around the world and give them a status as world heritage sites of course this is based on certain criteria in Tamil Nadu UNESCO has declared the Mahabalipuram cave temples Thanjur big temple and Gangai Konda Cholapuram temple as world heritage sites So what is the relationship between UNESCO and HRNC UNESCO does not stop at identifying and declaring a site as a world heritage site they ensure that the heritage sites thus declared are protected from any alteration and also provide consultations to the nations in which the site belongs to on how to protect the pro- pro- protect such sites monitor them and ensures that they continue to have the heritage value many countries in the world are already utilizing their services in india ministry of culture ministry of railways 
Ministry of Urban Development and also with state governments of Rajasthan, West Bengal, Karnataka, Kerala and Punjab, helping them to protect heritage structures and cultures. Our country has signed in as member to UNESCO from 1945 itself. Topping all these credentials, HRNC themselves invited UNESCO in 1966, 1969 and 1970 to come up and help them with management of heritage temples. In 1966, Patrick A. Faulkner and in 1969 and 70, G.R.H. Wright came to Tamil Nadu to help in protecting Sri Ranganatha Swami Temple, Sri Rangam and Rameswaram Temple among other temples. They have published white papers regarding these temples, their heritage structures and the importance to protect them the way they are, ensuring their longevity. Each of these white papers are more than 50 pages. They describe in detail the importance of these temples and specify why they are important from a technical perspective and the technological superiority of these temples which are unparalleled in any part of the world and also specify how to protect them and preserve them. While this is the case, HRNC thought its thoughts, HRNC through its doubts had unsuccessfully spread defaming messages calling UNESCO as cultural terrorists and accusing them of trying to destroy our temples and convert them into parks. Which is why HRNC had given an unconditional apology in the High Court and the court had also directed them to give an unconditional apology to UNESCO as well. I already had said that UNESCO had come forward to help HRNC in three aspects. They are set up a team of conservation experts and stakeholders for a fact-finding mission to identify the issues in conservation practice through the case studies of about 10 temples where the conservation projects are ongoing or were recently completed. Second one is conduct an Agama workshop on conservation and uh, on conservation. The third is review of inventory, temp inventory of temples under the responsibility of the department and its grading methodology. As explained earlier, HRNC feared that they will be completely exposed if the UNESCO, uh, experts of UNESCO take up these above tasks. They lied on their affidavit and were caught red-handed. If only HRNC did what it is supposed to do, there is no need for them to fear this way, isn't it? The very department called UNESCO 55 years ago to give them expert advice. Now today, they are saying no to UNESCO. This shows how this department has deteriorated and have gone to doldrums in these 50 years. We will continue to learn more about the case as well as our, as our, our responsibility in helping preserve our temples. I know many of you are listening to this and I request you to spare a minute to show your support at our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Our Facebook page is www.facebook.com slash our temples our pride. Our YouTube channel is www.tinyurl.com slash our temples our pride. You can also send in your questions to our friend temples our pride at gmail.com. I repeat our temples our pride at gmail.com and I will try to answer as many questions as possible both by email as well as in this audio blog. Take care till next. Srimat Srimate Ramanujayanamaha.